Of course, you know it's Monday, and we're so I'm so happy to be back with Enough is Enough. <laughs> You know, occupying public yeah. offices in Nigeria comes with a lot of privileges. Yes. I mean, you talk mm. about lofty salaries, mm -hmm. fancy cars, mm -hmm. nice houses, amongst other things. But it also comes with a lot of responsibilities to the citizens who put them in the office. So tonight, um, in conjunction with Enough is Enough, we will focus on holding government accountable, right? And it starts with um, this first one. Um, I'll, if you refer to my slide, it says the security and welfare of the people shall be primary purpose, shall be the primary purpose of government, security and welfare of the people, uh, right? And this is from section 14B, subsection 2 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, right? And if you move down again, it says this responsibility of government are protection of properties and lives of citizens, promotion of economic development of the country, provision of social amenities for citizens, upkeep of law and order, protection of human rights. Or more, like if you check all of these things, there is a lot of, you know, mm. X, X. If, you, if I was a teacher, I'm marking this. We read pen. I'm telling you, marking this call sheet, it is red pen mm. all through, right? Mm. If you talk about the welfare of citizens, right, we are actually suffering in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, yeah. I drove, you know, my children do school in Lagos. Mm -hmm. I have to do four hours trip and all that. You end up sometimes eight hours on the road. It does not make any That's sense, at all. right, that you, you have to suffer so much hardship in this country. So when it comes to the welfare of the people, right, social amenities, mm -hmm. we, like, not they are non-existent. We have to do better. Mm -hmm. Let me come to you. I think, uh, um, Diola, you're next, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so, I mean, taking it further, in terms of checks and balances, um, laws such as um, the Freedom of Information Act 2011, Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007, EFCC Act, amongst others, exist to provide checks and balances in the way public officials behave, operate, and how government agencies are managed. Okay. This one, I don't, I don't know if this laws exist in Nigeria. It's on paper, but I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then um, let's come to, well, office of the citizen. You know, as an employee works for an employer, so also elected officials work for those who hired them and pay their salaries, citizens. Oh, this one definitely doesn't happen in Nigeria. <laughs> um, let's come to how can, go how can citizens hold government accountable? understand the roles and responsibilities of each arm of government and how they serve you that's one number two stay up to date with current events by following reputable news organizations number three support and engage with journalists activists legal experts and civil society organizations to monitor government actions and advocate for policy changes hmm. number four if you can, if you see something, say something. Expose corruption, misconduct, embezzlement, and nepotism in government wherever you witness it. <laughs> Number seven, participate in public hearings, Twitter spaces, community forums, and town hall meetings to voice your concerns, pro propose solutions, and demand accountability from elect, elected officials. I mean, all these things, they, I mean, this is what we're expected to do, but I'm not very sure that um, we are even, we, we have the, we're able to do any of this. It, it's, it's, it's very, this is a lot of power to, you know, the citizens. And it's interesting that as we progress in this polytricity, you know, we begin to understand our own um, strength and um, what is expected of us. And I think that if we can do just a fraction of this, honestly, I think um, it will be a step in the right direction. But again, I mean, this is Nigeria. Things are not just, um, you know, it's not all well, I black think and we, white. I, I think we can, we can get better the more we educate. Mm -hmm. Because now, if you look at it based on what we have said, mm -hmm. the, the most mm -hmm. important office yeah. is the office of the citizen yeah, yeah. true mm. true 
True. But how do you want to report embezzlement when you are the recipient of embezzlement? <laughs> Don't shake that table, Diola, please. <laughs> okay, so um, following how citizens can hold the government accountable, first things first, know who represents you. Know who represents you. Mm. This is very important. You know, we tend to always blame everything on the president, the president, the president, the governor, yeah. the governor. Meanwhile, we don't even know who our local representatives are. We don't even know the chairman of our local um, government. It's very important that you know who represents you. And thankfully, thankful for um, Office of the Citizen, there's a chat box where you can just simply send hello via WhatsApp to 0170063816. Hello via WhatsApp to 0170063816. So this helps you to know who your governor is, who the senators are, the House of Representative members, your state House of Assembly members, your local government chairman, and even the councillors. And most importantly, be an active citizen. So don't just sit back and say, oh, so what's the government doing? What's the government doing? You have a role to play, like we have said. Just the way employers employ people and the, employ the employees are answerable to the employers, that's the same way the government's elected officials are answerable to you. You hold a very important office, and you have the right to know how your resources are being managed on their behalf. And then you also, you also need to be the change that you want to see. And that starts with being yeah. an active citizen. citizen. Absolutely. There's no way to let her put it. All right, so on that note, we're going to be discussing something interesting that we found in the news, um, the EU report that came out. And um, that's what we're going to be discussing today. And here's what we found as today's quote. In just one month in office, Nigerians appear satisfied with the, um, the de decisive leadership of President Tinubu and the manner he is redirecting the country to the path of fiscal sustainability and social economic reforms. We urge the EU and other foreign interests to be ob objective in all their assessments of, in of the internal affairs of our country and allow Nigeria to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and this came from the presidency that's the quote all right so standard bearers of the people democratic parties right in the 2023 general elections atiku abubakar and his labor party counterpart peter obi have attacked the presidency for rejecting the european union final report on the february 25th uh, presidential election the eu observer mission in a briefing last week faulted the polls, own, owning um, to the enduring systemic weaknesses. Now, the presidency, however, rejected these claims. So today, we're, we will we'll be discussing the federal government's rejection of the European Union's um, election final report. And we're asking, what's your take on it? But first, let's quickly go on a break. When we come back from that break, we'll see what we found in the news. You are still watching Ways Now. International Plastic Bag Free Day is celebrated every year on July 3rd to create awareness of the adverse effect of the use of a single plastic bag on the environment. And this day is celebrated to remind communities, organizations, and people worldwide to avoid the use of plastic bags in their daily use. Plastic bags take hundreds of years to decompose, endanger wildlife, and also increase pollution. So as much as we can, let's avoid the use of paper um, plastic, plastic bags. bags. Now, a lot of companies are moving to paper, paper bags. bags yeah. Then for people that even have those plastic bags, they use the reusable ones mm -hmm. so that you just keep on you you know, using those ones. Yeah. I mean, yeah. here, they see the answer you see. <laughs> I mean, if you go to more developed countries, countries. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> Like, my sister has a permanent carton in her, in her the trunk of mm -hmm. her. She just she throws. As she's buying the thing, she's throwing them inside. The, you know. yeah. There was a documentary I watched one time of, um, um, I think it was in India, the mm. ocean. Oh, my goodness. When they, there were some fishes they saw, you know, that had died. When they cut them open, mm. you see the, 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 the stack of plastic um, um, inside Containers. the stomach of the, the fish. I said, wow. It's a lot. We oh, really going don't too far. Yeah. If you go to these beaches that we have around here at some point, especially during the rainy season when the water has when the ocean has come to the shore like yeah. that, you see how dirty it is and that's because of uh the way we trust. First of all, we have a very terrible trust system in this country. But then 
I believe that. I like those paper bags. Anytime I go to restaurants and I order takeout and give me, they're really cute. So I don't know why everybody cannot even start to adopt paper using bags, those paper right? bags. Yeah. Those nylon bags, are, they are, they are ugly. <laughs> and they should start selling them so that it would dissuade people from. Right. I mean, if you go out of the country, they you actually when you go shopping, you have to buy the 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 paper and the, uh, the nylon bags. Mm. You know, okay. so you you the without telling you, they dissuade you from using it. You know, when you know that you have to buy it just to pack your stuff. So like what I said, I mean, just having reusable bags and then, you know, finding alternative, alternative ways to do that. And again, of course, there has to be a lot of sensitization. Mm. I'm not very sure that people know how, how disastrous oh it is okay. and how much harm it can, it can cause in the environment. I mean, look at our drainages and all that. You see that um, all these paper, um, plastic, um, styrofoam, um, plates, you know, or all these nylon bags, and people just trash it on no, the road. So they eat bones, they trash it yesterday. on the road. They, they tra- I mean, it's crazy. Yola, let me help you. Yesterday, we went to yeah. Ojodu Begana. Mm. So, when we were coming back into Lagos, because of the mm. the traffic, we mm. had to detour through that river valley okay. road. Yeah, yeah. So, we, yeah. now, we now came out that Ojodu Begana. Mm-hmm. Mm. I said, please, are we still in Lagos? I said, you are in Lagos, we're very much in Lagos. <laughs> if you see the heap oh. of Mm. Um, rubbles that mm. like plastic uh, sachet water, <laughs> all the pet mm-hmm. bottles, like they had dug everything out. If you see the heap on the road, I literally mm. could not believe that this same Ojodu beggar that Ambody cleaned up. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm. Oh, they now, the median, yeah. right? Some of the median that they had put to so that the people to, to encourage people to use mm-hmm. it, the they have removed. Ah, no, 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 this country. We're a special breed. Honestly. We're a special breed. <laughs> Let's see what's in the news. Let me come to you, Diola. Okay, um, so my headline news is um, four-year-old dead, four infected as um, diphtheria enters Nigeria from Nijay. Um, the Federal Capital Territory Administration has confirmed the outbreak of diphtheria, a deadly disease, which has now claimed the life of a four-year-old boy out of five reported cases. Um, the director for FCQ Public Health Department, Sadiq Abdurrahman, who made the declaration Monday in Abuja, said information available to the department indicated that the disease was imported from neighboring Niger, um, Niger State, no, sorry, Niger State, you know. Um, he discussed this two weeks ago and um, alerted the public on the possible outbreak of the disease in Dai Dai, with eight suspected cases reported. Um, this has gone on to, I mean, it's gone on to be tested. The samples for testing at the National Reference Laboratory in Gadua, as well as the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. But um, for the purpose of, um, okay, so before I come to, for the purpose of us who don't know about this disease, um, it is advised that, um, I mean, um, residents should visit the over 400 vaccine outlets across the territory to get vaccinated against the disease. Okay, so, um, I mean, when I saw this, I, for one, I've never heard of this um, word before. So, apparently, the um, diphtheria is caught by coming in contact with droplets from respiratory tracts of an infected person, particularly spread by coughing or sneezing. If the um, now this um, it, it can also be spread through wounds or lesions from an infected person, and um, there is not much that causes this disease uh, outside of um, when we when we when we um, have um, unhygienic practices, we live in very dirty environments and all that. You know, it's a bacteria. And um, the truth is, for some people, it resides in their throat. For some people, it's on their skin. But it is very deadly. However, it can be treated with a vaccine, a vaccine that allows you um, to, that deals with um, this disease as well as um, tetanus. So um, it is important that we keep our environment clean. We keep ourselves clean as well. 
just I don't know if this is as a result of the rainy season or like they said, this is um, something that would be predominant in the northern area of Nigeria. But I mean, this is Nigeria where there's a lot of um, cross migration. So you just mm. never can tell when it can spread to other parts of the country. But um, we're hopeful that the government stays on top of this thing and um, they're able to curtail this disease. As well, <laughs> Um, <laughs> just don't have an well. All right, so let me come to you. Okay, so NYC blames banks for delayed coppers allowances. I know a few coppers, and I've been seeing them ranting on Twitter <laughs> and on their social oh, media. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Joy, I'm sure you don't you don't be paid either. <laughs> okay, so um, the director for press and public relations relations for NYC, Eddie Megua, in a statement released yesterday, um, in reaction to agitations over the delay, has assured the court members that he's interfacing with the banks to fast track payments. He said the management of NYSC is aware of the worries and agitations. And that undoubtedly they had completed all arrangements for the payments of the core members' allowance since, Tuesday, since June 27th, and remittances were made the same day to the various banks cur currently. And he also enjoyed the core members to remain calm, law abiding, and dutiful in their respective places of national service, as the scheme will continue to treat issues relating to their welfare with utmost priority. But my question is so, are you telling me that all the banks? decided <laughs> to have a problem at the same time. Is that what you're saying, uh, Eddie? Anyway, I'm not a copper, but I just pray that they get their money soon because I'm sure most of these people are dependent on this small yeah. that they are getting. And transportation these days. So there are some schemes I want them to scrap in this country. <laughs> like, <laughs> number one. My story that I'm about to tell you, if, if they can quickly play this video for like maybe like 30 seconds or something, just to get a clip of the the students, then I'll come back to my story. So thank you to face this result, and this is what they gave me. This is the result here. So this, this is my aggregate, 362. This is exactly how I printed it. I downloaded it from that site. So they now saying that I forged my results is what I don't know. And I'm traumatized that they accused me of forging my own results. Because I'm not capable of this forging results. This is the evidence. Okay, they say that I forged my results. They scanned this QR code there. And then uh, it showed another name. A Yoruba name. Omotola Afolabi. 138. So this story, uh, I've said it, that there are some things they need to scrap in this my lifetime. Jam is one of them. And... Um, First of all, I don't believe JAM as an exam is a true test of knowledge because the way, you know, objectives, I can literally do kalu kalu, pumping, 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 and I will come out with a score, right? There's no how I will score zero. If I do that, get work and all of that. Well, That's number one. There. Number two, right, there are strong allegations that JAM has made, right? They have come out to say that this girl... AG Mesoma, I think that's her name, yeah. that she allegedly inflated her result from 249 to 362, right? In this um, exams are just um, um, just completed exams, parading herself as the top scorer. Mm. The, the body also said that one Atom Gerald in Kaduna State, right, also scored 380 <laughs> for an exam that he never sat, right? He never sat on the, he, he didn't even sit down to write the exam, but he scored um, 380. So the, in a statement by the spokesperson, Dr. Fabian Benjamin, he said that, that they found cases of mesoma particularly pathetic as she had allegedly, um, uh, of course, would, would I say, uh, gotten the, the sympathy of um, um, unsuspecting members of the public, in, in, including businessman, um, that's Chief Innocent Chukuma, who offered three millionaire scholarship while um, a state uh, honor was being planned to celebrate her. He said the attention of the Joint Administration Board has been drawn to several publications, right, in both print and online media, celebrating certain candidates for being high scorers in the UTME exam. The board is constrained to set the record straight and wishes to state unequivocally that many of these results, which many of these candidates are parading, are fake. In many instances, some of these candidates had actually obtained far lower scores than they are claiming. 
and had used some of the funny uh, software packages to manipulate <laughs> their results to uh, deceive unsuspecting members of the public. So I want to speak to the spokesperson of JAM. <laughs> right? The spokesperson of JAM, Dr. Fabian Benjamin. Fabian. How is it possible that an examination such as JAM can, <laughs> you know, so except you're telling us that your server is compromised. Yes. For your information, you could have an, a case to answer with me. The only reason I've kept quiet is because, you know, mm. let's just keep quiet. Mm. But the truth is, right, a lot of children saw their results scoring in the 90 something percentile in English, I mean, sorry, in mm. math, in chemistry, in physics, only to be scoring 60 something in English. It didn't make any sense to all of us as parents, right? But some of us just decided, you know, let's just shove it aside. So if you as a body, you were being sincere, a lot of these people, there was somebody that claimed that he got a very high score, mm. right? I was wondering, my son's score was higher than him, and he was saying that he was the top scorer. So a lot of people, a lot of people have been parading a lot of I results said, yeah. since. But you as a body, what was the appropriate thing to do? Were you not supposed to be the oh, one okay. to come out from day one? Immediately the results came out. Were you not supposed to publish of those course. results and say, okay, of these course. are the top 20 scorers, these are the top 100 mm -hmm. scorers? Mm -hmm. No. Now you are saying that, the, and that's why the girl brought out that video. Saying that this thing, she went to the school. Yes, because yes, in right. time, yeah. all you need to do is to send a short code. They will send you the result. No, no. If you want to print it, you have to go on a portal. Mm. So how did she manipulate the result from 249 to, to 362? It's not possible. And what she then alleged in this video, she was saying that if you scan that code, barcode, yeah. it brought out somebody Another else's name. name. Yeah. Do you understand? So now it tells us that there is something fundamentally wrong, wrong. with that sure. examination body. So, Jam, tomorrow I will face you people because I want to discuss the matter. I am sure that many people would call in to say that they these are the, the problems same. that they are experiencing. Yeah. And I think that if you're not competent enough to handle that examination, they should scrap it. I've never been a fan of Jam. Mm. I will never be a, a fan of Jam. I would rather we do WIEC and let the universities just you know, conduct their entrance examination. Do you understand? Yeah. Because I don't understand why we will do multiple exams. There's post UTME, yeah, there's, post there's UTME, UTME, there's this, there's that. Jam, I think it is, I feel like it is very, very compromised. And they need to come out to explain. It's not the one that they are coming out to say that people are bringing big results. They need, to under, they need to tell us how this girl is able to print that result <laughs> from their website, from their portal. And they are claiming that the result is fake. On that note, we'll continue with you people, Jam. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> Let's take a break. Stay with us.